Red art, red art, red art. You, you look like your bed stinks. I would never ride another nigga way. My main goal is to blow up and then act like I don't know nobody. Hold on. I'm going to go to the monkey in the jungle. I'm going to go to the monkey in the jungle. Judge a man by the length of his hair, the kind of music he listens to. Rock was never my bag. Never my bag, see? Everything is now in our hands, dirty. On the internet. Hola, como estas? Estoy bien. Uh, si. Y tu? Uh, Topanga. Welcome to es Ken Force a podcastus. The most debased podcastus. I es Hamal. Hamal Abel Hellison. Uh, and I'm Ben Grim Wilson. Welcome, Ben Grim Wilson. What is this supposed to be Spanish or what? Like, <laughs> it's it just turned, supposed to be racist. It turned bad really quick. <laughs> it's just racist on really a few quick. levels. How you doing, young man? Doing right. How you doing? Not bad. Um, out here living life. I just had a fruit cup like you had. I'm still coming down off this cold. Yeah. I had a cold last week. It sounded like I was like doing coke on the air. I was sniffling so much, but that's not true. I just had a cold. No, so I, I was there. Yeah. Wanted to make that clear. Um, how's your week been? Week's good. Week's good. Yeah, it just started, so. You look like a week's good. No, it's it's a day late, though. We normally do this on Monday. Today we're doing it on Tuesday. Oh, no. So. So thank you for doing that, for facilitating my needs. Oh, you didn't have to snitch. Yeah, don't snitch on yourself. Don't I wasn't going to tell anybody. It's all good. All right, whatever. How you doing? Um, someone says, are we eating cannabis gel cups? No. No. Ben doesn't in, Ben doesn't indulge in cannabis. I do not indulge in uh, the vices. Dude, did you hear about Will Ferrell? Well, uh, yes. What's up with that? Um, he's okay. So, in case you didn't hear, uh, Will Ferrell was involved in a pretty serious car accident. It wasn't over. I think it was last week. It wasn't over the weekend, was it? It was last Thursday. Yeah, I think it was last Thursday. Yeah. But they like reported on it Friday morning. Um, I heard he was in character as Ron Burgundy. Oh yeah, it was something for like some charity event or something like that. Yeah, right? literally they said he was like in character when the action accident happened. Yeah, how would that feel if you fucking uh, rescued the real Ron Burgundy? <laughs> I'd feel good. Um, <laughs> I'd feel dope really answer. good. Yeah, dope answer. Look, I mean, you fucking saved an American hero. I'd love, I'd love Lamp. <laughs> you know, I, I'd be like, I know him, I know him. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Will Fair. I have a whole bit about uh I'm not gonna go into it. Don't but go into it, please. <laughs> it's like about it's like I was like Trump I was like Trump is mad quotable. So I was like Trump is like the Will Ferrell of presidency. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna get into it. No, I'm not, please, please that's go further it. into it. I wanna, I wanna hear more. <laughs> that's it. We're laughing. We're laughing already. We're having a good time. Um no, that's not a good time though. Is he alive? Like is he good? Yeah, he's good. He's, He's like fine. straight was, as fuck. There was one passenger, I think in his, I don't know if it was a limo or what it was, but in his car that was in Sirius. Uh, uh, was he driving? or No, he was like being driven. And it was someone else's fault. Like another car hit him. Shit. They didn't get arrested or anything like that. It was just like some weird freak accident. So, but What do you good. mean? He's like fine. a deer came out of nowhere? I don't know. I don't know the specifics on it. I just know that... Uh, they weren't arrested or taken into custody or anything. So. They were just like, hey, brush that shit off. <laughs> yeah, it was probably like a tire blew out or something like that. Shake that like, shit off and get on home, young man. <laughs> he was just like, you goddamn right. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. Um, what else? Let me see what else I had but on But how here. would you, so, you know, it'd feel good to save Ron Burgundy, but how would you feel if you murdered <laughs> Will Ferrell and he was in full Ron Burgundy regalia? Even better. You, you would feel good <laughs> like, about that. Like, even cooler. Are you kidding? <laughs> you save an American hero. You're one guy. If you kill an American hero, you're then him. Like, yeah, it's that's like, true. It's you like know? Highlander. Yeah, it's like, I've become him. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be an even better story, though, if he was dressed as Ricky Bobby. Like, that's all I wish. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was totally thinking that same thing. Um, I'm talking way louder than you. You wanna? Should we do anything about that? Just wanna... I think that's just how you oh, talk. Oh, I just talk way I louder? Talk. Yeah. Okay. My bad. <laughs> um, what you been listening to? You listen to music ever? Uh, no. Because you know really, we like to talk about I music. I really been here. listening to too much music. No music. <laughs> nah, dude. I have Sirius XM radio now. So. Oh my God! You're in the. Dude. You're fucking. You're getting it. You're gonna. 
don't let that shit trap you, fam. <laughs> That's all industry plants. No, I did it because uh, I started lift driving recently. And it sucks, but okay. it's a, I feel like there's you know, more people in LA that drive lift than take it. Uh, yeah, no, that's true. We that actually, a- um, you know, sign up for lift, um, with buddies. We have what we call a lift buddy. <laughs> um, and then they'll call to give you a couple rides every once in a while. <laughs> what? And then we'll, like, what do you mean? The, like, y'all, commission. like y'all are selling, like selling weed in high school. Pretty much. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, I got we're a buddy. selling rides. Yeah, and we'll like go around, and they'll dress all like hip and nice and everything, and we'll roll down the window and be like, "Hey, babes, you should totally check out Lyft.com." And then they <laughs> you throw that. Do you have a, a stack of those cards that no one ever uses? Well, I don't. Um, With like a little code on it. it's like, "Yo, fifty bucks." I never. I've always. I never get fifty bucks worth of rides. No, um, I actually hired. Um, instead of paying for the cards, you could actually um, opt to pay for like a Skyrider. <laughs> so I did that over Venice Beach last week. Um, nice. I got zero people. <laughs> Everyone was like, we don't get, I don't know. They were like, we drive Lyft too. Yeah. <laughs> could I think you that's stop? what it was. Yeah. I was um, like, I'm homeless. I drive Lyft. <laughs> no, really. I met a dude who was homeless. He lives in his, he had like a, what was like a, a Escalade, you yeah. know, and he had like all his clothes in the back and he was just like, yeah, I mean, I drive Lyft and I live in here. Yeah, I don't give a shit. No, that's the way to do it, though. Because you, you can go from town to town, you're like kind of like a lift carny. <laughs> you can go from like town to town without worrying about anything. It's nice. <laughs> lift carny. No, that's really true too. Yeah, like I, I love it when I get the lift driver that's like from Orange County, but she, she, they're just down here. You know, they're just like, oh, I just made my way. You know, <laughs> like, like what the fuck? Like, what did you wake up and th- <laughs> what were you thinking about? No, um, I'm listening to some music. But dude, a lot happened this week. Um, J. Cole's gonna drop an album at the end of the week. Let's let's go from least to greatest. Yeah. <laughs> Is that hate? No, yes. that's truth. Uh, what's up, K.O.D. King of Diamonds? It's gonna be a strip album. It's gonna be like straight Coley Cole. Like, I don't get like, it. I think the neighbors think I'm popping ass. Um. I don't get it either. I like what do you for real being serious? What do you what do you expect from that? Like what do you expect from a new from a new J Cole? I don't know what to expect. Cuz I mean after what 2014 Forest uh, Uncle Phil Was that the good one? I mean that was the one that everyone was on about. Yeah, okay. That's um, the that was like that was a pretty good one. I liked it. I liked the one that was the one where he was talking about like Iggy Zelia Macklemore. They take our blackness. Right, no, like, I think so. yeah, he was like, t- Fuck, I don't know. he just had some slappers on there, a couple of them, and then the next one was with the trash one that yeah. nobody liked. Yeah, for, was it my eyes only? Yeah, yeah, for your eyes. Um, so it's like, I'm expecting something like that, but then with a name like this, like you said, it's supposed to be like a strip club album. No, I made that up. No, it's supposed to be a strip club album. Is it really? You said it on the air. No, I made that up totally. Yeah, I know, but oh, but I'm also year. yeah, I'm also doing publicism for yeah. it. Coley Cole. I don't know. You call out a lot of things on this that end up being completely true. So. I know. Oh my god. I don't know what to expect now. Fuck that album. Ain't nobody listen to that. You know what I'm really listening to? Fucking Nicki Minaj, bro. Nicki just dropped two slappers, yeah. slappers. Like I was like, when I heard those songs, my like skin stood up. I was like, my my hair stood up. I was like, holy, sh- she's she's rapping like Drought Three Little Wayne. You know, you know where I heard uh, both of those singles? Where? On a Sirius XM Channel 44 Hip Hop Nation. So go ahead and uh, subscribe <laughs> with my code, uh, Ben Anthem Standard Grim Wilson XL49. Uh, get 20%. Did off you really first. listen to the That's singles? Where I actually heard them for the first time. Yeah. They go. I don't well, have a code. I mean, Please because she has, a, she has a full, you know, she has a team behind her. She has a label or, you know, they, I mean, not her label, but you get what I'm saying? Like, she, she has a push. So, but I'm not mad at these songs being pushed. Like, when Anaconda came out, I was like, I don't give a fuck. Like, you know, I don't, my anaconda don't want none. It just, you know, but right now this is a slap. These are like Chun Li. I Chun-Li forget what she says, incredible. but she's like, yeah, she's just like, it sounds like Lil Wayne wrote it. Yeah. It really does. I'm like, man. X-Men Vince Vaughn. You know, I don't really know what that means. That's my, my favorite line in the whole song. What does that mean? I have no idea. Yeah. Thank you. I have no clue. I didn't know what it meant either. And I love it so much. <laughs> like, yeah, I like it a lot. Chun Li goes crazy like it does like she says a whole lot i remember like and she little wayne's a lot where she just says things that don't make any sense especially together but she says she wrote some she said she wrote like that song or either half the song like a year ago 
So she, people were like, were you dissing Cardi or something? She was like, no, I wrote that a, a year and a half ago or some shit. So she was obviously dissing Remy. But <laughs> it's still like, you know, like just few, like really sporadic. And like she took a bunch of really good bars and old verse or, you know, just things she'd been sitting on and really made something cool out of it. I ain't mad at that at all. I'm not mad at Nikki. Uh, she's also playing the in, the media right. Because you heard about the whole Cardi shit. Like basically Cardi B had it had made it appear like, yo, Nikki just changed her verse because her verse was trash, blah blah blah. In actuality, Nikki, you know, you heard the leak, right? Nikki's verse said like Cardi's name in it. Mm -hmm. So Cardi and the label were like, Nikki, get her off the, like, you know, tell her to change that. In actuality it was Quavo and Nikki's song to begin with, you know? So basically Cardi just came through on some bully shit. But Nikki's been doing that for years, you know, like Nikki bullies the shit out of radio stations and people, whoever she wants to. So a lot of people are just saying like, yo, this is get back. But like, what do you feel like? What what do you feel about this? Like, who's in the wrong? You know, I mean, I don't think either are in the wrong, you know, from my humble um, point of view as a straight white Christian male, <laughs> straight white Christian male, then means it's the most. Please. Hey, bro. Can can you not get us? Can you just not mention that so much so we don't just get like blackballed, please? What do you, from all the cool places? Whiteballed? Yeah, like exactly. We're gonna get whiteballed if you look. Don't. I'm trying to get us advertiser money, so I'm just gonna <laughs> throw it out as much as I can. I'm Christian sorry. mingle money. I yeah. don't. I don't think advertisers are really friendly. We'll we'll talk about that later. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, well, I'm just saying it's mainly owned by a bunch of straight white Christian dudes. So, just saying, trying to get us an in. But all right, I'll I'll. Lay I'm a down straight on white it. Christian dude. Go ahead. Um. No, just like you said, though, I mean, she's just doing exactly what Nikki's been doing. Like, she learned from Nikki. So, I don't think either's in the wrong, right? Like, it's just... You, you know, know who's in the, the You know what wave. the truth is? No, uh, I'm from the Bronx, so I'm biased towards Cardi. But I think that Cardi has... I think that Cardi has a trait in her that makes everyone biased towards her. Like, if you've ever stuttered, then you're just bi biased towards Cardi, if that makes sense. You get what I'm saying? Like, if you've ever had a lisp, you're biased towards Cardi. Like, you get what I mean? Like, if you've ever, you know what I mean? Like, uh, anybody who's feels like that. You get what I'm saying? Like, anybody who feels they've ever been victimized or at all or ever been oppressed or anything is kind of just like, yeah, Nikki's the shit, so fuck her. You know, like, fuck the oppressor type shit. Nikki the oppressor. Isn't that funny? I mean, he's a straight white Christian male. I know a lot about oppression. Motherfucker. So. <laughs> Don't use those goddamn words again. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> goddamn, I said goddamn words. <laughs> um, no, but, um, okay, what do you think is going to happen in the future? Because I have predictions. I think that. I think we're going to get space cars. I think we're probably going to have to learn to breathe underwater to live with um, different amphibians and fish type creatures. Um, I think Donald Trump is not going to give up his presidency and he's going to become a dictator. Um, what else? <laughs> I think we're all going to end up looking like Rashida Jones because the gene pools are going to get so mixed. So we're all going to be gorgeous, beautiful, just mixed people. And there's not going to be any more, um, SWCMs. So it's going to be great. <laughs> um, I think all that shit's not true because we're just living in a simulation. So we're just doing the same five years over and over with the with like a randomly generated memory, you know, we just like have a memory of like, yeah, we think we lived our whole life, but we're just been living the same five years over oh, so and over. Then that means there's no future. <laughs> no. So future. then your question doesn't, it doesn't matter. even matter. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next one. Let's <laughs> does it even, now, what do you mean? What do you mean in the future? No, between Nikki and Cardi, um, Nikki is doing some creepy shit because she is, I've noticed her trying to recruit younger girls like Asian doll, Cuban doll, and just all the younger uh, rappers, she was shouting them out in the recent interviews. I'm like, I see what you're doing here. Because Cardi's already cool with Remy. And uh, remember when she did that? Remember, like, I don't know if you remember, Remy recently brought out Cardi and brought out a bunch of people just as, like, a big sign of, like, see, girls can stick together, Nikki, your bitch. Um, I mean, Taylor Swift already did that with her Bad Blood music video, but we'll move on. We'll keep going. It's for the blacks, okay? <laughs> this is for coloreds. But what I'm saying is... Uh, Selena Gomez, my man. <laughs> Selena, she was, Go she was Selena Gomez she, she was, was the big, She was the big draw in her, that music video. Her name is Gomez. Yeah. Like, that's pretty awesome she didn't change her last name. <laughs> I would have. No, I'm kidding. Um, 
Um, I think that that's what they're trying to do. I think they're trying to like divide and conquer the youth and the rest of the girls. And I think with that being said, I think that Nikki is going to put out a song that basically has more that has more feature potential. Does that make sense? That like has more people. Everybody wants to feature on it. You yeah. know, um, recently when she did that song, Shy Rack, a long time, like I forgot mm-hmm. when it was, but she did it with like G Herbo a long time ago and shit. Everybody wanted to remix it, you know, and I feel like. She's just a rapper's rapper type person where people are going to want to remix her song. Like, we'll get to it in a second, but like the Who Run It challenge or whatever. So I feel like she has that type of potential, which make which takes her a little bit in a crazier place. But Cardi has, um, she has the whole label on her side. So I'm sure that like when she drops a single and it has like a really good video and shit, it'll get like infinite views. You know what I'm saying? Everybody will love it and she'll perform it 10 different places you know what i'm saying it'll be a big deal yeah but it's like i think nikki might as long as she just wraps her ass off she's gonna catch one you get what i'm saying she's gonna catch one that makes Lil wayne want to do a remix and everybody else in the industry you know what i'm saying the whole industry is gonna be like let's do a remix of this you get what i'm saying yeah what do you think is gonna happen when cardi b does a remix of that song Ooh, spicy there's just gonna be tons of uh sublims for sure. Like, they live in subliminal worlds. Mm-hmm. Like, all girl rappers are just like, fuck that bitch with the pink hair and the, and the teeth. She got 24 teeth in her goddamn mouth. I hate that bitch. She wears a size A and a half cup, and she likes to get her fingernails green. I hate her. You know, and everybody's just like, who are you talking about? It's like, nobody. I'm, I'm never talking about no bitch. Mm. I just be, you know, talking to the world. You know, and you're just like, oh, you little catty little MFers. But that's pretty much how I've noticed all girl rappers are rapping. Uh, I, for one, uh, disagree. <laughs> to all the women listening out there, I think you're beautiful. You're gorgeous, bro. And you're not gonna, you're not gonna take them. <laughs> you don't know that. You watch. <laughs> I meant to say like you're not gonna like. I'm. I know all the girls. I know the girls, the girl rappers. All right, fine. Name twenty girl now. rappers. Twenty girl rappers. Um, Missy Elliott. Um, Ed Sheeran, uh, Takashi six nine. Uh, yeah, yeah. You see that video? Which one? The one with him on the on the body, the girl's body in the. You know, (laughs) got it, got it, got it, drop it, drop it. I already said. I said last week that was my favorite song of his, right? Yeah. Before the video came out, so you know, just out here predicting, out here Negro Domison, Negro Domison, in that an awesome way to put it. Um. Let me see. Let me see the list, cause Marlon ain't talking about none, but Marlon over here. Um, hey, you want to hear a secret? Yeah. Or a theory? I have a theory. No, no. No, no theories. Yeah, secrets only, please. <laughs> All right, secret, secret. I talked to DJ Academics. Okay. He said, "Everyday struggle is over." Mm-hmm. That no, that's my theory though. I don't think everyday struggle's coming back. I think they're done for. Why? Because I think academics wanted too much, which was a uh, human wage. <laughs> you know, like Complex is like, nah, we don't get human wages out here. You know, you could, we're, we're McDonald's. You just got to get two of our jobs, you know what I'm saying, like to live. And they weren't, they're not giving that up. And they had another dude that they, you know, they had to bring Wayno in. So it's like, you're now paying three, you're now paying four people. You used to pay two. I'm sure that Star plus Wayno has the equal uh, Joe Button paycheck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, now they're pretty pretty much paying for Joe Budden. They didn't want to pay for him anymore. And now then academics is like, hey, I want I need a Joe Budden paycheck too. And I was just like, mm, let's just cut the whole thing, <laughs> you know. Uh, but it's crazy because Complex has such a huge budget, and I've been I've been tweeting Complex <laughs> fucking all week how to do it right. Like we need an around the horn type TV show where people do it like off a of video chat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You need like you need a young guy and an old guy from every coast. You know, you need a guy from the west, south, uh, east, and, like, Texas, and, like, uh, you get what I'm saying? Like, Midwest area. Yeah. And that's a full, and you're going to get a full, like, viewpoint. Like, there's, Nick, they could literally pay low-key, you heard that new, you know, everybody who used to do, you heard those new blogs, you get blogs, you get what I'm saying? You could just pay those four, those four or five guys the same shit you used to pay to fucking get your artist's song on there, and then they're coming in, you get what I'm saying? And they're video chatting every day given like a like a really good around the horn type you know like current 
hip hop show. Yeah. Instead of just a oh we got one old guy from old, from New York and one young guy from New York. It's like what kind of viewpoint is that? You get what I'm saying? It's not a rounded viewpoint at all. Yeah. I've been telling, and I told them they also have to uh, basically just take away all sponsors that aren't, or that have anything to do with music. Like, go get beer sponsors. You know what I'm saying? Like, beer would love to pay for this. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have to get a music sponsor and then be like, oh, we got to make sure we talk about Craig, uh, rest in peace, Craig Mack. I'm sorry. That was a bad example. But <laughs> we don't want to get the music sponsors and be like, oh, we got to talk about Eric Sermon. You know what I'm saying? Today's episode, we got to make sure we talk about Eric. No, that shit's corny. Just go get you a beer sponsor, you know what I'm saying, and 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 fucking then you can talk about whatever. ESPN doesn't get sponsors from fuck doesn't use the Yankees as a sponsor, you know what I mean? To be like, yo, we're gonna talk about the Yankees today, it's sponsored by the Yankees. Yeah, <laughs> the Yankees are the shit, you know. Like nobody does that, uh, so I don't really see why that's okay in music. You know what I mean? What what did uh what did the complex say? <laughs> Not a goddamn thing. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Well, I like the idea. I think it's great. Of course, um, they didn't say shit, man. But yeah, that's fucked up. They should they should really hit you back. I mean, is, doesn't that make sense though? Yeah, especially with the whole sponsor thing, because it just doesn't make sense to have. Because then it's just all biased. Yeah, it, it's and it's, it's already New York biased, like you said. So exactly, it's already New York biased. So we need people from the set. Like they know nothing about the South. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Joe Buttons knows nothing about the South. I listen to his podcast or something. He's like, oh, man, Young Thug sure does have a nice house. I'm like, Young Thug has about 20 slappers. You know, like, have you ever heard of Young Thug? He's like, Young Thug's got a nice house. I'm like, you know, shit like that makes me really, um, oh, fuck. We forgot to talk about Coachella. Why aren't you at Coachella? Why wasn't I at Coachella? Yeah. I was driving Lyft to Coachella, my man. Oh, you were. You no, drove. I was not. <laughs> you I drove Lyft. Not. I bet those are good. Those are probably Surge. Yeah, probably. Probably they served sent out, out emails and shit. So, oh, they did. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, what happened at Coachella? Did you see Beyonce? I watched Beyonce. Yeah. You did? That's cute. I didn't watch Beyonce. Why I watched not? the highlights. Uh, what the fuck? I look. I mean, it was the weekend, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do alcohol on the weekends. Yeah. Yep. And just watch some bay while you're. I mean, I play music. I I could have watched it. I you was just drunk. Easily watched it. You just chose not to. Yeah, I know. I just said drunk. It's fucked up. I watched Brockhampton. Oh yeah, at Coachella. Mm-hmm. Did they go up? They, yeah. Oh, who else? Who else is good? Did you watch like a lot of the? Performances? I really only watched Brockhampton and Beyonce. Motherfucker, I would have watched Little Uzi. Like I bet Wiz was probably good. He's always a good performer. Um, who else? I totally forgot it was like you could watch it online oh, okay. until Brockhampton tweeted out the link. Did like, you? Oh, you didn't shit. see Post Malone? I heard Post. Post Malone was right before Beyonce. I yeah, heard he I heard was he really wasn't good. good. Yeah. Well, I heard he wasn't good either, but I wanted to see it for myself. Yeah. I didn't want to talk shit. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to just be like, fuck that guy. Because people like to talk shit about Post. Mm-hmm. You know, like in a, at an unfair rate. They're yeah. just kind of like, oh, look, look at him. He, he, he's drinking a, a beer. Piece of shit. Look, I love Post Malone, but I don't understand what, <coughs> like, what's going on with him right now. What do you mean? What do you mean? Um, what do I mean? Uh, like you don't like his songs sound the same. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't think it's his music really. It's just like he just seems to be like, why is he getting all these face tattoos? <laughs> like he's already famous. He doesn't need them. Uh, Post is really crazy, bro. Um, because I'm such a weirdo. I watched a goddamn... Like twenty minute breakdown of his song Psycho, uh-huh. and apparently it has like a whole bunch of references like to the movie Psycho and to like uh, the car that was in the movie mm-hmm. and shit like that. What I'm saying is I'm I'm trying to defend him, but basically, when you're white and I, you really okay, are about that, on. and you're just like really about that art shit, when you're black and you're really about that art shit. You know when you're like 14, you know you're just kind of like, yo, I'm fucking, I got, I got to be a rapper because math class is hard, and you know I'm not quite tall enough to play basketball and shit like that. So you're just kind of like, you get into your art early, you know what I'm saying? You start wearing your baggy clothes, blah blah blah, whatever, right? Post is an artist, but he's also white, so it's, I feel like, I know it sounds terrible, but just like he has that face tat, so he just has to get more face tats or else. 
pe- or else people are going to think he wants to be an actor eventually. Does that make sense? But like the weirdest thing is how he always has come off as like, oh, I'm not a rapper. I'm a I'm a musician. That's why I say he's he he he's, is he's an artist. But he, he's like really diving into the white rapper. He he is, but he is not really doing that. He's also he's more so um, diving into the forward for like forwardization of like. I hate to say pop music, but just most popular music, you know, like he's, he's kind of like a, and that's what I mean. That's why it's really tough. Like he, it's really tough to understand, but he's like, he's studying art a lot. And I think that he knows, like I said, he just doesn't want to ever be like mistake. Like people just be like, Oh, you're an actor now, you know, here, be an actor or like, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's like easy for him to like go get a bunch of, endorsement deals and stuff i mean because he is you know white unfortunately you know he is white and shit so it's like it's easy for him to like jump genres and do things but i think him doing a bunch of face tats and shit is him letting the world know like no music music like pay it no i care because i do know he's a music nerd like you know what i'm saying i know he he knows a lot of like old music you know what i'm saying like he he cares about music i think and i think that he's i think that he's really just trying to like I mean, the only reason you ever get face tats is so you cannot do something. <laughs> you know, like, I want to get up. You get know what I'm saying? You get I mean, face tats to limit yourself. Yeah. So I think that's what he's doing. I, that's just me trying to defend him, though. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not against it at all. It's just like, it just strikes me as weird. It just seems kind of counterintuitive to a lot of things he said before. Well, I know that, I don't know this, but I don't think he's going to do anything besides music. You know, and that. That I think is surprising to people. Like I think people, I think if you're white and you get a certain amount of big, you're just gonna do a, mo- a movie or something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I know that sounds like I, well, that's why I'm on this podcast. I'm trying to get to a certain amount of big. You know, I can't t- drive Lyft all my life, my man. Hell to the yeah. You get what I'm saying. All right, um, let's take a break real quick. This camera's about to okay. Uh, real quick, right? Yeah. Right back when we talk about R- Mitzi Shore. R.I.P. Mitzi. R.I.P. Mitzi Shore. Do you know who Mitzi Shore is? I do not. Mitzi Shore. Mitzi Shore is the godfather of comedy. She started, she opened up in like the mid-70s, I think, a place called the Comedy Store Mm -hmm. here in Los Angeles. Um, She, every legend that you've ever heard of either got their start or their home place is the comedy store. So if you, you know, like everybody from what's his name too old, what's her name? You know, like yeah. everybody from Richard Pryor to Roseanne to, you know, like Rogan or Dave Chappelle or Martin Lawrence or Chris Rock or, you know, Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. They got that big ass head of his in there. Yeah, absolutely. So like everybody knows that Mitzi Shore is like like Mitzi Shore was like the toughest she's like the toughest comedy critic. Mm-hmm. Like so many people, like Tom Segura or somebody like said he didn't make it, you know, like they she would just be like, No, nah, you don't got it. You know, like you're not funny. Yeah. Uh she is uh she's t- uh Polly Shore's mother. You know Polly Shore? Yes. The uh she actually wouldn't let Polly Shore perform That's most of the time. Probably good on her part. You know, yeah, she's she's like, uh, but he's really broken up right now because she is she has just passed. So yeah, so like everybody's like, you know, like everybody's like, what the fuck? Like it's like a big deal because even today she didn't necessarily like run the day to day of the comedy store because she was so old. Yeah, but she like. Um, she, you could still kind of get her approval and, and, you know what I'm saying, and be somebody just based off that, you yeah. know? And she's kind of like, but don't get me wrong, toward the end of her life, people say she would kind of like, she's the type of woman who liked a more, you know, Eddie Griffin. Yeah. You know, Eddie Griffin type comedy mm-hmm. of just being like, motherfuckers be like, nah! You know, <laughs> you're just like, you know, like very Eddie Griffin. Like, she's a, a fan of that type of comedy. That's why she wasn't like a fan of like Tom Segura type comedy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So she'd be like, but she she's like, just every com- comedian you've ever heard of. Um, basically, she was old as hell. Different people had been running the comedy store for like the last maybe like five years. Like different people that she appointed. Yeah. And now, just last week, R.I.P. Mitzi. 
R.I.P. Mitzi, man. The OG. The fucking OG. So that sucks. What do you think about that? You, ne- that? you really never knew who that was? No, I did. I just wanted you to be able to explain on the air. Motherfucker. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Eat my ass. Uh, well, that sucks. I don't want to, like, fucking stay on that too long. Yeah, no, it's... So if we could just move right along, I don't want to be disrespectful towards her. Yeah. But uh, R.I.P. Mitzi. Quick moment of silence. And it's over. Drake album on the way. Yeah. June, <laughs> Drake album. What is it, June 2018? Uh, is it June? I thought it was... Bro, I thought it was May. I thought it was... Er, okay, it is early June. Because I think Kanye's going to drop in May. I think Kanye's going to drop in May. Um, What are you more... What are you looking forward to more? Kanye, Drake... Kanye. Cole. Kanye. It's, why would you even put Cole in the conversation? <laughs> to be mean to him? Yeah, like that. <laughs> like, you're looking towards, I don't know. I love Kanye. I would I would prefer not to answer this question, actually. No, I, let me try to sidestep this. Let me try to squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. Um, so you're obviously looking most forward to Drake. I got feelings. Yeah. <laughs> I got feelings, fam, so... But it's like Kanye, when he drops, it's like, when Kanye drops, it's kind of like a fucking Star Wars movie. It's an event. Yeah, it's like you got to watch it just to be like, what the fuck happens in this goddamn Star Wars movie? I mean, that's normally how movies work. You yeah, have to but watch it, them to understand what happens. Yeah, but them. I don't really care. I only care because it's a Star Wars movie and because, you know, I don't, that's the only reason I care. Like, does that make sense? Like, I don't. That doesn't re- make sense at all. Uh, you only care because it's a Star Wars movie, but you only care because it's a Kanye drop. Like, all right. That's why you should care. Yeah, but it's like, all right, let me. This analogy sucks. You know why? Because Star Wars sucks. It does not suck. But what I'm saying is, like, the reason I watch a Star Wars movie is because it has the highest production. Okay. The highest production, period. That's rule number one, like, by a lot. And that's a okay. lot of Kanye's aesthetic, too. The highest production possible. Mm-hmm. So then I'm like. All right, there's a storyline that I semi care about just because at least I can talk to other people about it. And, okay. you know, it's not like the most gripping, oh my God, what the fuck's going to happen? No, Drake's storyline is crazy. You know what Drake's out here doing? Beating the fuck out of producers, putting on every new artist, and, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Um, Kanye did not put on designer. I don't care what nobody says. Like, Drake put on Block Boy or somebody like that, you know, because people didn't were never going to listen to it if Drake didn't get on. You get what I'm saying? But people were going to listen to Panda anyway, if that makes sense. It does. That doesn't make sense. It totally does. It's like Panda I mean, was people a- would listen to Panda but not at the rate they listened to. Yes, Panda. it no. was because if you gave it radio spins, it was going to it was it's that catchy get ra- of a song. How did it get radio spins? That's what I'm saying. It's exactly. that catchy of a song though. But if you gave Blockboy radio spins, it would it would just be another dude with it would just be like Young Dolph. You would just be like, "All right, dope, Young Dolph." Like, it's it's all right. We like it, decent, but you wouldn't be like Young dog, like, oh, this is the new guy. You know, only fuck, you know, only young dogs dem- demographic would be saying that. Drake made everybody say, oh, you know, do the dance. You know, everybody's doing the, the block boy dance because, you get what I'm saying. So that's why I think Drake has Drake is more riding the wave, and Kanye's more huge production. This is the wave. You get what I'm saying? Like the the like. It's like it's like Star Wars. It's like that's just a huge big ass movie. That's not I don't know, super bad or some movie that really worked that worked on its own merit. You get what I'm saying? That like was just like like a bunch like Seth Rogen being like, "Yo, I got a big budget and shit, you know, let me go find the homies who can make a good movie." You get what I'm saying? As opposed to just being like, "Give me a billion dollars. It's in space." Yeah, space, but, nigga. But, <laughs> but the like you're, the question you're asking is is which am I more excited for like the drop, right? So like with that same analogy, like who who are people gonna be, what what's people gonna ugh, what are people gonna be talking about? What are people gonna be more excited about? Like the big Star Wars movie or like some like small comedy that like the world. No, and and that's what I'm in. saying. If we're asking what people are gonna be worried about, Kanye all day. Nobody's ever gonna you know. I'm on your side, Kanye, but that wasn't a question. The question, that's why I said I would like to sidestep this answer because maybe my my answer doesn't match people's. You know what I'm saying? But like, I don't feel like your answer matches what even what you're saying. My own criteria. Yeah, because you're saying it's like the big Star Wars movie, 
and Drake is like, you know, the Judd Apatow comedy that like, you know, it'll star Seth Rogen or whatever, but then you got like, like 40 year old virgin or whatever. It had like, you know, Steve Carell before he was like a big, huge movie star mm -hmm. and like all these other dudes in it. And then now they're all like huge famous. That's a Drake. Movies. That's a Drake right there. Yeah. Exactly. But like what we're more, I'd rather watch about. that than star Wars. I'm uh, easy star Wars. I'm mean, that's not, that's not what we're asking. People are more excited about a Kanye album anyway. <laughs> like, yeah, that's of course. So that's so like that, when they come out, it'll be two completely different things. Then you can like compare them for what exactly. They are, that's why it's so. That's why it's so not fair to even. That's why it's not fair. You, you know, asked the question. I know. That's why I didn't want to answer the question. I, I. You don't get it. Whenever it's somebody else here, I figure out how to manipulate them into answering the question, and then I get to run I away. Know, from I, it. I answered the question for you. Yeah, of course. But you also got me to do it too, which is which was scary. I was like, "Fuck, Kanye's gonna li Kanye be listening." Yeah. I deleted my Twitter before I had like maybe like 12k. I deleted it because I was sure Kanye was listening. Uh, like you saw he got back on Twitter, right? No, I, I saw he got back on Twitter, but I didn't go read the tweets. What was he saying? He's just, I mean, it's he all, was saying some crazy shit though, right? No, not really. What was he talking about? It like I mean, all over the place type stuff. I mean, he has a new neck tattoo that somebody designed for him. <laughs> he wrote about it yeah he posted the picture he's been posting a lot of pictures and shit of like <laughs> just like memories and he's stuff he's like I'm 40 fam it's time for a neck tat dye my hair blonde <laughs> that's awesome um that's awesome but yeah everybody was saying he was saying something crazy though he was like you heard about Kanye you heard Kanye's he's out there he's, he's being crazy again he's on Twitter he's being crazy I don't know. I didn't I listen. I don't think he's very crazy. Yeah, I haven't read yet. I promise. But well, I, it's just gonna be like some really just batshit crazy tweet out there that everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, this guy doesn't think it's crazy at all." And he's like, "I like to eat babies." <laughs> yeah. And fart on old ladies. He's like, "I eat babies." Push them in the street. But I just be eating they ass though. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you gotta say it like you gotta say it like Kanye voice. I be eating they ass though, fam. You ain't never come in see a nice little baby ass, just soft as hell, looking over there. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you're, like, you're like nasty easy um <laughs> moving right along <laughs> uh speaking of tweets you heard little yachty or you heard smoke perp was like little yachty's top 10 yeah uh shit what do you think about that what do you how good of, you think yachty is a good rapper yeah you ready for my controversial yeah go ahead i don't think he's a good rapper okay i think that yachty should stick to doing melodies and shit because whenever he raps he raps like a nigga who could mediocrely rap in 2004 he really 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 does and and I, I thought about it a while at first when he would first do like the freestyles on the radio and shit I was like this kid can really he's rapped and I was like no rapping is not the same as can rap it's kind of deep. You have to explain that. Yeah, that's not deep as hell. That sounds just stupid. Oh, as it's hell. deep as fuck. Rapping is not the same as can rap. Let me explain it right now, right now. Well, Cats. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you go into this, what are you saying? Yachty is? Are you saying Yachty can rap or Yachty is rapping? Yachty understands that if you rhyme a lot of words really fast next to each other, people will think that you're good. But he does not understand. How and and this is a thing that I only I, th I think Kendrick has a problem of too. Um, if you go check out a guy named Fred the Godson, <laughs> Fred the Godson can rap. You know why? Because when he says things, <sighs> he raps like the old Jadakiss. The old Jadakiss can rap because when Jadakiss says things, they make you shiver, and each line goes with the line after it. Does that make sense? He goes, he goes. The blocks full fifty and blah. I I'm, I'm I swerved around, came by, hit the whiffy like ah. You know you're like he's telling a story and it rhymes. You know what I'm saying? And each in each line is progressively more intense. You and get what I'm saying? And you're saying Kanye has it or not Kanye? Kendrick has an issue with that. Kendrick also has an issue with that because Kendrick does the same thing as Yachty in a lot of ways. You know why? Because he sits there. It feels like Kendrick writes a lot of words that rhyme really fast, like. Cat, hat, bat, sat, dat, mat, pat, right? And then he goes, fuck your pat, your cat, your bat, your sat, your bat, that, that, that. You know, and he just goes, fuck your dat, that, that. And you just list things. He, Kendrick is the king of list. It, go listen to a Kendrick song right now. At the halfway through every verse, it's just a huge list of something. He goes, he goes, uh, 
My name is Kendrick and I got you in. I'm a fuck you man. I'm a fuck you dude. Fuck, you, fuck your sneakers. Fuck your hat. Fuck your ears. Fuck your heart. Fuck your nose. You're just like, bro, would you? You know, and, and Yachty figures that out too. He's like, Yachty make, raps. When, he, when Yachty's rapping, he goes like this. He goes, my name Yachty Big Boat. I be all up on a boat. And it gonna float. Go hard. Gonna go. And you know I gotta go. Gotta kill him real quick. Just kill him right up in the throat. Doing what I got to do. And everybody's just like, he's he's rapping right. He's doing it. You know, it's like, no, he's not actually. Like, you're when he's, it's like Gucci Mane is a better rapper. You know why? Because he says, he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, $20,000. He had ran off with the low. But right when I had seen him, I had shot him in the throat. So you go, oh my God, this guy shot somebody in the throat. He rhymed about it. It made sense. He he explains, like, don't wrong me or else I'll do something to you. You get what I'm saying? There's a story to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that is that is that is like what it really is about. Like making somebody, like I said about the Nikki song, like making my arms stand up and shit, being like, Ooh, she just like said something specifically to somebody, and ooh, it hurt. Not just she was just like Nick. My name's Nicky. I'm a big. I'm stick. My name's Nicky. I'm sticky. I'm wicky. Yeah, but she's I'm not, wicky. She's Other not bitch telling icky. A I'm wicky. Licky bicky. But what I'm it's not. A, but that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying she's describing like she's still like just describing a scene or describing herself or just talking cool and talking in a cool way like. Not listing things and not just yeah, not up, using alliteration up, up. or list. You you're get what I'm saying? Literally, just like, you're, like alliteration you're, and you're list are what sense, I'm against. You were making sense, and then you just completely backtracked on it because now to be able to rap, it sounds like all you have to do is sound cool and say cool things. Yes, but but yes, but like I said, it's it's avoiding it, it's avoiding things that make it look formulaic. Formulaic things are alliterations and lists. You know what I'm saying? Those two things that I just told you those other two people do, which is like so, okay, lean so on whole, one the thing that they can in, do. In Chun Li. What is that? I forget. Let's hear it. Run it real quick. Let's run it real quick. It just sounds like a list of her saying things that rhyme. No, no, no. It is and it isn't. It's 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 man, this and is, I'm not and I'm not trying to like bash that song at all. Like we've discussed this and yeah. it's great and I love it, but I'm just saying that that doesn't make any sense to me how that is good to you but other stuff isn't. Okay, Her, that I just remembered. Okay, I, I just had to hear a little bit to get the beat. You get what I'm saying to remember yeah. what she's saying. Uh, this entire list is about, or this entire song is about how, and a good song a lot of times, like a good Gucci Mane song, is about how he's gonna kill you, or how about how he's a really good entrepreneur. You get what I'm saying? This song right here is about how she's more attractive than everyone else, or you know what I'm saying, or just more desirable and just the shit. You get what I'm saying? And how she's. Dripping, she's dripping off the bench. What she say? I'm dripping off the, uh, off the. You sitting on the bench while I'm dripping off the. You get what I'm saying? Dripping sweat coming off the court or whatever. She's saying that she's working harder, balling and the shit. Like that's what the entire song's about. Whether it be like she might be like my watch costs this or I'm so cool at this or my pussy good or something. But it all has to do with I'm the best. You know what I'm saying? The next song is. Or like Barbie Tings was about uh, how she's leveled the same thing, but a slightly different angle. You know what I'm saying? Just her level, how she's leveled up over all the bitches and all this other. You know what I'm saying? So there is a, there is like a, she's like being a good, think, can we have this conversation? Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Being a good rapper or artist in general is about being like a legend or having like a lore around you. Being like somebody mystical. It's never about skill. You get what I'm saying? It's never about somebody being like, he just raps so fucking fast. That guy, right? They just. No. Everybody, people are just like, wow, good job. You know, they, you, you, the Harlem Globetrotters aren't in the NBA for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, the NBA is about who can win. If we, were, if we were talking about this and just under like the guys, if we were talking about, you know, this whole arena and then Lil Yachty, I'd totally agree with you. But as soon as you brought Kendrick into it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Well, this is the thing. Kendrick tells a really good story about Compton and like about his specific life. But I think people, it, I guess I have a small amount of resentment in it because I think people try to relate to it just because of the skill set, just because he's very skilled at alliteration and like using words back to back. People want to act like their life you ever heard the song Duckworth? People said that was like his best song in the last one. It's a story about his how his father, you know, it's yeah, a story. Yeah. About how. You ain't lived that story. That wasn't your life. 
that was a decent story, but everybody's like, yeah, in the hood, he'd be like, no, no, you don't know shit, you know, and and that's the thing, it's like, and I guess that's what even, and Kanye started this, Kanye, in my opinion, no, no, okay, I'm so sorry, Souls of Mischief and people like that started before him, uh, even as far as like uh, Tennessee, the niggas from Tennessee, like people before him started at what's called, there's two different types of rappers, there's superheroes and there's relatable rappers, Kanye was the first superstar relatable rapper. That's why I say he started that idea. That's why, and that's why I say I like I don't like the relatables. Kanye's back to being a, a unrelatable. You know, he's back. He's now a god. You know, he's what we always wanted out of him. But when he started, he was relatable. He's wearing polos. He was, you know, everybody was like, I wear polos. He's just like I thought you had to wear fucking Sean John to be a rapper. You know, like he's yeah. wearing a polo. So he he created that whole lane, and now Kendrick, like I said, is is milking that whole idea of people being like, "Oh man, I can relate to this guy." Like you know, he's a guy in the city, and he's trying to make it, and he's a pure guy like me, a pure youth, you know, and all this other corny shit. It's like that. None of that shit is like saying. I've never heard Kendrick say anything like, "I can't even go to the grocery store without some ones that's clean and a shirt with the team," you know. And I don't even think Kanye wrote that. No, you know, so we can get into that conversation, but I don't feel like it right now. But uh, but we definitely after this. But what I'm saying is like. That's what being a rapper is about. It's about twenty thousand dollars. He thought he, he thought I let it go. Saw him in the club. Gucci shot him in the throat or or like any line that you get what I'm saying. Any so, line that makes you think that person's magical and, and special. So people that relate to Gucci Mane. Hey, they some real. They're crazy. Gucci but, but has, the, the, you have the same exact people that try to do the exact same thing with those songs. They're like, oh, I relate to that, I, and they don't know what the no, fuck no, they're no. About. Yeah, but that's but the thing is, but it's like even from creation, you know that even if you're relating to that, you're trying to be better than people. You get what I'm saying? Like you're trying to be like the biggest gangster, or the hardest, or alpha something, like to relate to that. You know, like DMX or whatever was crazy, and you know people relate to that, but. But it's not about, but like, he's not appealing to relatability. You get what I'm saying? He's not, and he is, he's appealing to relatability in the trap, don't get me wrong, but he's still appealing to like Scarface mentality. You know, he's still appealing to like, you could be here one day, as opposed to like, you know, like, this is exactly what you are, just a broke ass bitch. You know, like, nobody's just, like, Kendrick is still appealing to like a kid who's sitting on the stoop listening to some rap music. So who's he appealing? Like, who, like he's literally, he's literally what is doing Kendrick's exactly character? what they're doing. What he's is Kend- literally doing what they're What's doing Kendrick's and he's character? rapping about what he knows. All right, what I'm he's saying telling is... telling story like what he knows. Logic, fucking J. Cole, those are the people you were talking about right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, Trying totally. to like, oh, I'm the relatable. I, I watch Rick and Morty. Yeah, and yeah. Like, no, that's fucking yeah, that's stupid a, as hell. And you're right, you're right. Kendrick's in the middle, okay? I won't I won't put him all the way in the Logic, you know, in the Logic Rick and Morty watching ass niggas. You know, I'm not going to do that to him because he seems like a real cool guy. He seems like he's Kendrick seems like he has a little bit of future in him where future's like, hey, don't worry about who I really am. <laughs> you know, worry about exactly what I said on this album. Yeah. You know, like, don't don't get out of my face with all that. You know, he's, I put that out there for you to believe for you to listen to that. So maybe that's what Kendrick is doing, because he does seem like a decent guy to hang out with. You know what I'm saying? He's a super from what I've read, like just a super uh, like. Uh, I can't even think of the word. Yeah, what? Well, bad. Uh, he he's just like he's not shy, but he's like stays to himself. Like he's not very like public with everything. But that's what I hear about Future too. Yeah, very much like uh, I'm gonna go in this hotel room with these girls now. Could you not come? Yeah. You know, could no one come, please? Yeah. Like, you right. see, Kendrick won the Pulitzer Prize last night for music. Yeah, what yesterday. is that? What does that mean? Um, I mean, it's big. I need for you to sense. describe this in depth. I can't describe it in depth. I don't, like what I don't song? Know. I, I need to talk album, to Mr. Pulitzer. Album. No, his I need to talk to this it. nigga. Like, his album won it, but it's the first time that any genre other than jazz or classical has ever won. So that's why it's like a big deal. I thought they meant, I thought they, honestly, I thought they meant like the first time a black person ever won besides jazz. <laughs> besides jazz. You know what I'm jazz, but you know what I'm jazzy ass niggas was over there doing some shit, but. Uh, <laughs> that's what it seemed like. I really thought that was the truth. I thought they were like, no black guys have ever won except for the jazz and the classical musicians. I mean, I duh. You know that nigga Gregory Hines could tap them goddamn feet. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> like, like so. So there's no specifics as to why this nigga won. They're not. Nobody's like. 
this song changed somebody's life or nothing. It's it was just, just like, like I mean, I know the Pulitzer Prize in writing. I didn't even know if they did it for music till yesterday when I heard this news. What do you mean just, in writing? Like news stories will win. Like a Future's Pulitzer the best Prize fucking writer like in that. music. I'm not talking about music. I'm talking about like news stories and stuff like that. Newspaper articles. They win like Pulitzer Prizes and articles on like Time Magazine and shit like that. They just win. It's like excellence and stuff like that. So I don't know what the criteria is. Yeah, what the fuck is the criteria? For the music, but it's like... I it's, just spent 20 minutes hating on Kendrick, didn't I? Yeah. What the fuck is the criteria for this? <laughs> like, I, I mean, I don't even hate Kendrick. I just... It's just like a Pulitzer Prize. I don't like... Come on. I don't hate the guy at, at all. But Kanye's made... Some of the biggest albums of the last ten, like where's his Pulitzer Prize? I, I can't Kanye does it. not deserve a Pulitzer Prize, and Kendrick think, does. I also think it's the fact that it's you know 2018. And the yeah, fact I think that it's Kanye the fa- hasn't been huge. What do you talk? Okay, his albums have been giant. Fade, Fade has like seven, has like 200 million views alone. What Kendrick song has 200 million views on fucking YouTube? What Kendrick video? And Kendrick does fire videos. I remember when Kendrick last year, when fucking Humble came out and they were fucking tricking the algorithm algorithm of YouTube, and I was and I was ranting on here about it. Then I'll be like, I want to go listen to some Little Yachty right afterwards. Go be humble, be humble, be sit down. <laughs> like you motherfucker, we see what you're doing here. You're trying to sneak that shit in. Um, where's Pee Wee Longway in the goddamn algorithm? You know, are you familiar with Pee Wee Longway? I'm not. Pee Wee Longway. All right, we got to talk about him. He's a great rapper. I love his music. I like everything he does. Pee Wee Longway came out, quote unquote, was discovered on the exact same mixtape as Young Thug was discovered. And it was called, it was when Gucci Mane did the World War III. He did Molly Lean. Molly Cush and Lean. You know, it was three parts to his mixtape series. And one song had Pee Wee. One song was just Pee Wee Longway, right? And it was a really good song. And Pee Wee went crazy, and he blew up a lot. Uh, and he made a, a few other songs and a lot of other th- waves going on, right? But right around the time Migos hit superstardom, and the whole dab controversy started, Pee Wee was in that controversy. They basically, I don't want to say what they did because I don't know. It's all fucking speculation. But for some reason, Pee Wee got no more like hype after that you know what i'm saying now he puts out his videos everybody acts like they don't know he's putting them out you know what i'm saying he literally came out with like i said with gucci thug migos everybody right but nowadays everybody's just kind of like mm, when's that new young thug coming you know peewee's putting out uh he works with omar the director which is like the same guy who does all of gucci Mane's videos and all these other people's videos Wait a minute, are you fucking, do you know who fucking Pee Wee is and you're just bullshitting me? No. So I fucking explain it to the goddamn podcast. Um. So yeah, it's just weird that right now we don't know what the fuck's going on because Pee Wee is like, um. Like I'm legitimately surprised I've never even, I've never even heard of Pee Wee Longway. How the fuck? I don't know. I legitimately do not know right now. You're it's not familiar with Pee Wee It's kind Long- of upsetting. All right, let's see. Let me. I'm gonna let you hear really quick, just for the. Uh, he's on this song called "Quarterback" with Pete with the Migos and and. Uh, oh, he was on, he was on Young Thug's first song he ever put out. Uh, remember this? It got them things loaded. He's the fat one. You don't remember seeing Noisy? Where, where they follow Pee Wee Longway around, and he does a show, and it's like the corny white dude that I hate, and he do, he follows Pee Wee around, and he uh and Pee Wee like goes pull he's in Atlanta, and they're like oh there's a gunshot in this uh in this uh stove or whatever, or whatever, and Pee Wee's like you know I'll you know, you know and like uh and like they go into the trap and shit, and he has all this lean, he's like and he like he's testing out the lean, he's like this ain't activist, you know, and he uh and then they go to the show and like. The lean bottle falls out of the car, and the cops are right there, and he's just like, whatever. You know, and then he goes in the show, and it's like Noisy Atlanta. It's like what kind of put on Noisy uh, mm-hmm. when they started doing the Noisy different yeah. states shit. It was like the viral one that went crazy. Uh, the point is, that's what I'm saying. Pee Wee was, and that's crazy. Pee Wee was literally like the mayor of Atlanta at one point. 
And right now he's putting out music and everybody's just acting like, oh, we don't see it. We don't care. You know, he has no features from all the people he used to have features from. I'm like, what's up? What you guys do? You just don't fuck with Pee Wee anymore? I mean, this is a question. I mean, I can't comment on it because yeah. I don't know. Like, I wish, this I wish is a, Brian were here. This, yeah, this is a question for Thug. This is a question for Guwap. And really a question for Migos, because I feel like Migos, because this is the same thing shit I ask about Skipper the Flipper. Skipper the Flipper is another guy who came up with that same whole group, and that he's just like, nope, fuck that guy. You know, everybody's just like, eh, I don't fuck that guy, I don't fuck with that guy. I'm like, but what about Skipper, Skipper, Skipper the Flipper literally invented the dab. Um, he was the first person I ever saw to do a dab on a, on a on a video or whatever, and he did it, he was like... He played football. You know, he came up from college football. All right, hold the phone. We'll come right back, guys. All right, so, yeah, Skippa. I'm sorry. We had to take a quick break. Skippa is um, – Skippa and Pee Wee. Well, like, did you see Coachella that they cut Nikki's verse out of the whole motorsport? No. Well, I'm letting you know now. They cut Nikki's verse out of the whole motorsport. Basically, what I'm thinking is that the Migos have been making, like, diva moves for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, I don't like him no more. I don't even, I don't even like him. I mean, I just leave him, yeah. leave him alone. And you're just like, what? Don't leave, like, don't leave Pee Wee out of this, though, because Pee Wee's a big deal. After this shit, I'm going to go in and tell you all about Pee Wee a lot more. Um... This week I've been listening to Trouble Edgewood a lot. That's a good mixtape. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I've been listening to Ben Staples on interviews. Yeah, <laughs> he's pretty funny. Whenever he went off on R. Kelly, it was pretty great. Yeah, I know. Like, why is he uh, taking every opportunity to do so? He's trying to be the Hannibal Burris <laughs> of uh-huh. <laughs> of that situation. Did we talk about Young Thug's album last week? I don't think so. It's good. I like it. It's like only like three or like two or three songs though, but I like it. I think it's two. Yeah, I, don't, I only think it's two songs. Yeah, well, I listen to two songs, but then you then you find like a leak, and you're not sure if it already leaked or not, and you're just like, yeah, I listen to this one. You know, I'm not mad at it either. It's a good song, um, especially like the one with Uzi. Let me see what else we what we talking about right now. We talk, did you see? Let's have a little chat. Let's get into let's let's uh I like I like I like the order that we did this. Let's let's go younger now. Let's see, you ready? You ready for some younger uh kid? <laughs> I like that we didn't just open with this. But you know what I want to talk about now, don't you? What is it? <laughs> Cat me outside. How about that? You saw her put those hands on Woe Vicky? Yeah, did you see her put those hands on? We can't really talk too much about these children because they're young children. Yeah. I understand. Dude, I was upset. But I, a fight's messaged, a fight. I messaged you guys in the uh, the group chat, and like that that isn't a joke. That's my favorite cheesecake factory. It's like right down the street <laughs> from my house. That wasn't I knew you guys were gonna probably think it was a joke, but I legitimately almost like went to see a movie at, it's like Where? the America it's in Glendale, it's the Americana. Oh. Yeah. Like, I was thinking about going to see a movie at that theater over there. What were they doing at the same place at the same time anyway? I, I don't know. Whoa, Vicky said cheesecake. she was there dude. for, like, a TV show. She's doing, like, a TV show or something. I don't know, dude. Something tells me something's coming out with all them young children. All them I young children. I mean, they children. shoot a whole lot of internet stuff. Like, uh, I know DJ Khaled and Kevin Hart were shooting something there one time. Mm. They, like, had the whole place blocked off. Mm. Um, so, like, they just shoot shit like that all the time. Oh, at that cheesecake? No, at the it's like a outside shopping center thing. Mm. Oh, is it over by Flappers? No, that's no. That's not even Glendale, is it? No, that's Burbank. Oh, okay. You know, one of them, one of them old. It's not LA. <laughs> Who the fuck? Everything that's not LA is just like the Valley. I mean, it's <laughs> practically it, yeah. Okay, it's Fine. like it's not LA. Okay, it's whatever. The fucking Valley. Go to San it's San not, Diego. It's, it's the, the goddamn valley. valley. San Diego is not the what the hell? <laughs> if it's not LA, it's the goddamn Valley. <laughs> Go to fucking Studio City. It's the fucking valley. All right, yeah, All right. Studio City is the valley, though. <laughs> well, I didn't know. Go to go to comp. Uh, you remember before the fucking podcast started, my brother was like, uh, Brian was like, I'm on the west side. My brother was like, I'm in Compton. I was like, yeah, I think Brian's there. It's all it's all the fucking <laughs> Compton to me. It's not in L.A. It's fucking Compton. 
If it's the hood, it's fucking Compton. If it's not the fucking hood, it's fucking the valley. That's the dumbest thing I've probably heard you say <laughs> on this podcast. Well, I've heard you hear some dumb things. Well, fuck it. Fuck it, man. It's the fucking valley. Um, Not talk about it. What do you think? That's just the... I'm just not good with directions. So. No, not talking about that. About <laughs> Bahad Bahabi and... Bahad Bahabi. <laughs> Bahad Bahabi. I think Bahad... I think nobody... I think just like I fucking said last week, nobody wanted those goddamn hands with Frank. That's all I could think. All I could think was, damn, Frank looks huge. Did you not see the everybody... Video, did you not see everybody just be like... Yeah. Uh... My bad, <laughs> you know. And then she's just jumping around doing her thing, and he's just like, "What's up, though? Who wants it?" Like he sat there, he like calmly asked everybody, "He's like, who wants to square up, though?" Yeah. And everybody was just like, "Not I, <laughs> not I." <laughs> everybody was like, uh, "Not I, not I." <laughs> you know, I'm like, "Fuck." Um. So another thing I called in this goddamn podcast, and nobody wants hands with Frank in the whole fucking world. And that's really what I'm pretty sure was the saving grace of her. You know, like niggas was just oh, like, sure. there was like five blacks. <laughs> well, Vicky brought her whole black family. Why? Why? I don't. Why? Why are they all hanging out with them? Oh no, them niggas like, is grown what? as fuck, wasn't it? <laughs> well, Vicky's entourage? 18. She's 18 though. Well, Vicky is. Bahad Bahabi. She's like 15. She's right? 15. Yeah. Niggas, uh, academics had her as 13. Bro. And that brings me into like a really good rant. All right, go. Academic. I'm, I'm trying to get some no, dramatic pauses. No, no, no. Go ahead. I'm trying to get this dramatic. Man. Shit. Shit. Um, academics. He's biased. Everybody's biased. Nobody, nobody in this world's not biased. So I'm not even, I'm not even worried about that. But academics is very, uh, he a little bit sloppy and he's not super cool. (sighs) What I'm trying to say is that I'm pretty sure that he thinks that people listen to his entire video, but I don't know one person that listens through more than halfway of his videos. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's like. Every nobody goes to those videos to be like, I can't wait to hear his take on this one. You know, no one's ever said that about. You know, and I'm pretty sure that his head's at the size where he's he's thinking everybody cares about his opinions. You know what I'm saying? He's like, everybody, they love to hear what I'm talking about when I tell them about how you need to stay out of jail and me me I'm shaking my finger at Meek Mill or something. You know, everybody's just like, mm. you know, I watched him in a three hour argument with uh, Dom is live. Who's another guy who does very similar shit. He literally copies academics. And uh, he killed Dom is live because that's his son, you know? And he said that a, few, a lot of times. But he wouldn't, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I was able to listen to that entire three hours. You know why? Because there was conflict. You know, because it was fucking, because I'm just a little gossipy little girl who cares about the beefs. But I still ain't listening to his full, none of his full video, like his, you know what I'm saying? None of his videos. Yeah. None of his posts of being like, oh, NBA young boy, you just got to do this a little bit more. You're thugging it out way too much. It's just black. Uh, it's not, it's not. It's like, that's what I realized, basically. That's all I'm trying to say. Throughout that whole three hour shit, I realized that he swears niggas be listening to them goddamn videos. <laughs> is it just me or does it? Does it feel like his production value is like too low for how big he is now? I mean, he's doing he's doing smart. He's keeping it real. He's keeping it real. That's the corniest way to say it. But what I mean is like he's keeping it familiar. You know what I'm saying? He's not he's not trying he understands what he has to do to make you to to like I said, he I know for a fact he has to look at his analytics. Analytics tells you when most people click off the video. And I'm not being hateful by saying nobody listens to more than that half of the video. Like, I'm not even talking shit. That's just the truth. Everybody goes, oh, who went to jail? Click. Oh, your boy went to jail for this, this, that, and that. And then you go click off. But if you keep it playing, he's going to go, oh, these these rappers got to chill out. They got to stop with their doing too much lean. You know? Like, literally did a post. Uh, he did a post recently about uh, young Lil Pump doing a song about lean after he said he wasn't going to do lean anymore. All I did was listen, click the video, 
look to see if Little Pump was going to, you know, like, you know, he puts the video at the beginning. Yeah. So I look for the little, I look for the video. I go, hmm, okay, a little information. And then he goes, okay, so back in May, Little Pump was saying he wasn't going to do it anymore. And I go, okay, click. That's the information I was looking for right there. He told me exactly when he said it. You know what I'm saying? I got to see the little little pump clip. And then I'm like, all right, good. Thanks, man. Uh, he posted timely. You know what I'm saying? He has inside, insider, you know, inside shit. I'm like, dope. It's like, it sucks that Joe Budden doesn't know about as much, like, all the music we actually listen to. But I care much more about his opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like, about his personal opinion of being like, like, he understands, you know, how to, how to, like, really conspiracy theory up some smart shit or something interesting you know what i'm saying as opposed to just wagging your finger like literally academics spent a lot of time ever since meek mill's been in jail just wagging his finger at meek mill being like uh meek mill you gotta act this ter- certain way so you don't get in trouble you gotta do this i said that too obviously it's true okay but we all know that there's still like systematic bias and all this other shit that's going on you know what i'm saying it's not just Meek Mill's a bad boy, so he needs to stay out of jail. It's like obviously somebody. It comes out recently, recently that the guys that did his, did the officers that locked him up originally were are known for lying. You know what I'm saying? He's been saying in his music for years and years that they lied on me. This wasn't even real. You know what I'm saying? From the beginning, I was just in the wrong. You know, blah blah blah. So it's like basically academics is really naive. You know what I'm saying? Like really naive and and dumb and shit. And it's like. But what I realize is that people think that. Remember, I sent you that video that he uh, he. I don't think he does uh, manage Selena XO. I don't yeah. think that's true, and I don't think that uh, I don't think a lot of that shit is true. Like I think that people are conspiracy around him. But guess what? He's just biased. He's just a biased kid who's naive. You know what I'm saying? He's like, if I can help my friends get more views, then they'll let me cover them all the time. You hear about what happened with him and X? No. Uh, X, 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 X tentacles apparently was always messaging him like, hey, take that down, change that. This is the truth. You know, don't do this. Don't you don't present me in that light. Right. Academics got sick of it. He was like, I don't care about, you know, just leave me alone. And then uh, X went and started hang, started messaging Dom is live. You get what I'm saying? To cover his shit. Right. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like it's a little shit like academics not realizing like when to be biased or like and like when it's like a police thing you know what i'm saying like when it's like a cop th- you know like when you need to shut the fuck up because we got cop shit going on or yeah. whatever so it's like weird it's like i can just see something on that level coming back to, towards him pretty soon if that makes you know i don't want to put no negativity on the kid but it's like you can't just keep judging people like from a super naive place because that's what he's doing he's judging people from like a super naive like a super naive place. Like you see a you see a homeless person, you're like, damn nigga, take a shower. But you don't realize, like, you know, his family been through this and that and you know what I'm saying? This situation happened to that situation that made it. you get what I'm saying? You don't know him, you know, so it's not fair. That's all I'm saying. He's not he's not like like us, even you as a guy who's just listened to a lot of rap, kinda get it more. You get what I'm saying? You I could I was able to say that shit about Meek and you were like, Yeah, that's true. Like, cops aren't always straight and narrow. You know, people don't always get their job and go, I got my job. <laughs> do loot, do, you know. No, bad guys. Let's get them. You know, or yeah. nothing like that. It's like there's levels to this shit. We've all seen training day and shit like that, you know. So it's just, Act doesn't realize that he has, like, people's lives in his hand, though, on a certain level. Because, oh, because I'm so sorry to talk about 10 things at once, but this goes back to the Drake shit. Drake, uh, remember I was telling you about the case last week? with drake beating up the producer and shit that case got thrown out you know why because the producer didn't show up to the to the shit but drake was petitioning for academics videos not to be in the video you know what i'm saying because that's just media bullshit you know so it's just shit like that but basically x remember when the video came out of him hitting the girl like from the back or whatever like punching uh he's suing her for extortion because apparently they were like friends and it was a joke video and shit like that so it's just to make him look bad she she was trying to extort him so apparently he's winning i mean that's the that's the haps of it that's everybody's that's the court roundup drake's off the hook xx tentacles gonna get some paper i think he's not in jail takashi's not in jail um takashi's fake beefing with adrian broner have you seen that i don't know basically takashi commented under adrian broner's picture clown 
and Adrian Broner made a video post about it. That's no, no, no. You can't start no. No. Like, no. Someone slapped their hands. Someone. Like, no. You can't, like, no. Yeah. That's like, that's like you know, that's like, when I was in, like, high school, a nigga would, like, bump into you and be like, what's up? And I'd be like, no. Like, just <laughs> no. We can't, you can't, we can't fight over this. You were not allowed. Say something about some, like, say something about my mama or something, you know? Like, yeah. We're not, like, we're not allowed to, like, I, I won't allow this. This is, ugh. Disgust me with your with this with the pettiness of this. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh-uh. you go get go go masturbate. You need to masturbate. Um, it's like Adrian Broner. You could tell. You know what I'm saying? You could just tell that he just like want. You know, this whole clout chasing shit is disgusting. Just disgusting. Like really, you get you know what I'm saying? You can't comment under a nigga's picture. Yo, fuck you, dog. Yo, fuck, fuck you, dog. Oh, psh, pull your camera. Fuck that nigga, dog. I'm gonna beat the shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you thought you? Was... <laughs> well, don't nobody like you. You know, it's, like it's really obvious sometimes. Like, come on, guys, give me some type of allure. Yeah. Like you know, fake me out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Make me believe it. I mean, they don't make rat beefs like they used to. They really don't. Where's the little Romeo? Lil Bow Wow beef. <laughs> Lil Bow Wow's not trying to beef with nobody. Um, what 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 happened in this Lil Bow Wow interview? It, Lil Bow Wow said he just did his last interview ever on The Breakfast Club. You believe that? I, I don't believe much of what he says. <laughs> you do, have you ever Lil Bow Wow challenged? No. You don't you don't do that? No. No, you say you ain't about that front. Mm-mm. My nigga wear straight sketchers, though. <laughs> we ain't about all that front and bullshit. Ain't about that faking. Let's see what else I got on the goddamn list. Right quick, right fat, right quick, right fat, right quick. Um, all right. There was some shit I was going to talk to about with Brian. So I'm just going to talk about it with you. Nah, skip it. I ain't no Brian. I ain't taking place of Brian. <laughs> Brian's better than me and we both know it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um... No, what do you think about black youth? Because that's all we were going to talk about. What, you, you, you don't talk about black youth? You're one of those? Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> What's up? What do I think about black youth? I think yeah, what do you think about Black Lives Matter? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, I think it's... Uh, uh, uh. No, Um. did you see the black kids get locked up, like get put in handcuffs in the Philly Starbucks? The Starbucks? Yeah. yeah. That's all I was going to say. It's like, that's that was some up. bullshit. Yeah, that was like, that was some bullshit. Yeah. You want to hear a fucked up story that I went through? Yeah. You want to hear about me losing my wallet? Um, I lost my wallet a couple days ago. Okay. We'll close with this fucking fucked up story. This is a fucked up story. This was like fucking Saturday. I lost my wallet. Okay. It was, it was a great. It was a great morning. I woke up. I took. I took some items. I was gonna sell them to this place that. I don't want to tell you exactly where I sell. Like, let's just say I made a, a bunch of money. I made a, like a hundred bucks this morning. You know, I was like, "Huh, oh, made some money." You know, happy. Made this money. I was like, "Fuck yes, okay." Then I get on my skateboard. I skate over to the Goodwill because I'm addicted to going to the Goodwill. I go to the Goodwill like every fucking day. Like, I go to two different Goodwills almost every day because I'm sick like that. Um. You know, I'm always looking for weird ass shit, you know. I'm a fucking I'm a stereotypical LA hipster. But uh I go to this Goodwill because I'm also a stereotypical black male. I'm ready to shoplift. Okay? I go in here, I'm like, yo, I'm about to shoplift this shit, right? Cause I find this really cool pair of pants and I'm wearing sweatpants. So I'm like, I'm just gonna put these pants on top of these sweatpants I'm already wearing, right? Yeah, you see where I'm going with this? I have my wallet in the sweatpants. So I put the fucking pants on, right? I leave the Goodwill. I'm happy as shit. I'm like, fuck yeah. I fucking got some cool pants. I'm out of here. So I go to skate home. Oh shit, there's a really nice grocery store right here. Let me stop at this grocery store. I'm on a roll. <laughs> Why the fuck not? I think. Are you going to steal from the grocery store? I think I'm going to steal Jeez. from this grocery store. Hold on. Let me think about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm going. I go into the grocery store. I like to get these salmon plates. 
It's a really nice grocery store. I don't want to say which one it is, but it's a really nice one. It's right there. <laughs> um, I take. I want this salmon plate because it's high quality salmon. They got this like garlic goop that they put. I'm like, oh, this shit's fire. It's like the little butter lemony shit. I'm like, give me that. There's a there's a, a a young lady giving out fucking samples of like cheese right in front of the sal- salmon plates. I wanted. I was like. Hey, man, you know, I was like, fuck it. This is a fucking sign, you know? Fuck this. So I go to, so you know what I do? I'm walking out. I'm, like, walking away from it. I go over by the orange juice area, you know, like the little healthy juices area. Ooh, wellness shots. I like to drink wellness shots. I pick up a wellness shot. I'm like, ooh. I pick, okay, mind you, when I first walked in, I picked up, like, one of these really expensive bars of soap. And I put that in my back pocket just because I was like, you know, I want to smell fancy like a girl. So I already have the bar of soap, right? But I pick up the wellness shot, right? And I put, and I'm like, I'm about to take this wellness shot, right? Or like take it with me, right? Put it in my bag or whatever that I'm holding. And then I go, and I like walk an aisle. And then I'm like, nah, I don't really want this, right? So I put the wellness shot back. You know, I'm like, I like sneak it away. I'm like, I don't really want that shit. What am I? I'm just being frivolous, you know? I'm wearing brand new pants. <laughs> fuck it so I go to leave the store you know I like put the shit back and I'm like I go to leave the store uh excuse me excuse me sir can you excuse me sir can you put back that shot in your bag I am flabbergasted I am flabbergasted because I don't know if you know but I live in a nice area you know I don't live in the goddamn hood so I I stroll right over to that lady's counter at a full a full full grocery store. At like, you know, at least ten white people are there. Full grocery store. And I take my bag and I empty it onto her counter and say, Do I own this license now? Do you own this what? <laughs> I said the name of the grocery store. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I was like, Do I own this grocery store right now? And then she's like, Oh, uh, oh my god. I'm like, yeah, uh, wait, what's your name? Excuse me, what's your name? I'm really embarrassed right now. Um, this person, uh, excuse me. And then there's two black ladies in there. These black ladies are like, oh, uh, 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 oh, hell no. He ain't got nothing. He ain't even did nothing, you know? <laughs> well, you got that bar of soap in your pocket. Yeah, I forget about it. At this point, the pants you stole. At this point, at this point, I forgot about it, okay? So I was like, but I was like, I was just turning up. I was like, oh, hell no. I need your name. I need your name. She's trying to ignore me. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. It doesn't matter. I'm sorry, sir. You know, she's like trying to ignore me. I'm like, uh-uh, no. She, uh, the ladies are like, oh, you need to, we're the manager, manager. You know, the lady, the black ladies give a fuck. Right? They're here for me. I'm like, uh, you know, uh, like I said, my little sister is a, is a, uh, you know, a practicing lawyer. So I was like. I'm going to give me the, I just need the name and the store number and I'll leave you guys alone. You know, blah, blah, blah. I'm just trying to scare them because like I said, at this point, if they look at the camera, they might see the fucking bar. So I'm just like, uh, fuck you guys. <laughs> anyway, the manager comes out. He's like, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. He's like, can we get you a coffee or kombucha or something? <laughs> I was like, nah, man, I just would like to be treated like a human. You know, is all. it's really embarrassing when I come places like this. Uh, you know, these shots are actually 70 cents less over at the other store. So I was just going to go over there and get it, you know. Uh, I'm just talking all types of, you know, hot shit, right. Uh, he just basically apologized to me like 20 times. He's like begging me. He's like, please come back. Please come back. This isn't, a, you know, we, 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 we appreciate everybody's business here. I was like, yeah, my business won't even matter. I'll just take my business elsewhere. He's like, no, no, please come back, sir. We well, it really sounds need like to your come. business isn't business at all. So you're just stealing <laughs> so everything. It. So. It so was it. All right, so this is the fucked up story because then, look, that shit just cut off. The fuck? Hold all on. All right, no, it's, it's. All right, you ready? We back. I'm sorry. A little bit breaky, but basically the guy begs me, you know, come on back. We need, we love your business. Come on back. All right. You're you're okay here, and you didn't do wrong. I'm like, but you did. So, Let's not forget that you did. Absolutely, absolutely. You I were did. gonna steal that wellness shot. And yeah. You just decided against. It. I just decided against it late, late last second. So, but this, but so far the day is amazing. I already made money, and I fucking got a cool bar of soap and a pair of pants. We well, haven't got the bar of soap yet. 
Except, You're not out of the clear. Well, yet. he okay, okay. He tells me, please come back. We really appreciate your uh your patronism, you know, or whatever. We really appreciate you as a patron. Please come back. We fuck with you, you know, type shit. And I was like, yeah, but Alejandra, that was her name. I was like, yeah, I just used her real name. But uh, it's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I know it, it could fake. be her fake name. That's yeah, her know. fake name. Yeah, I mean, it, it's spelled with a J first. It's like Alejandra. <laughs> J I don't first. Think that's... Like jalapeno. Um, <laughs> that's fucked up. So I leave. I skate home. And I take off the pants, and my fucking wallet's gone. My fucking wallet is gone. Did Alejandra steal it? Probably, because honestly, it either came out when I put on the stolen pants or when I emptied out my shit on the counter. You get what I'm saying? Like, it yeah. either came out one of those two times... And I was just so excited that I like that I pissed off that whole that whole store and, and that those black ladies were on my side. I was just so excited to tell that story that I went home, my whole fucking wallet was gone. Like all the money I made that morning, all my IDs, my credit, my debit, fucking medical cards and shit, just gone. Just everything's fucking gone. So the moral of that story is don't steal bars of soap. From uh, Lassen's. Absolutely not. It's absolutely not the moral of that story. Okay, that's what I got out of it. Moral of that story. The moral of the story is, just make sure you got your wallet on you at all times, fam. When you're coming up, you know what I'm saying. Dude, you got into that three pocket pack. Like nowadays, I'm putting my wallet in my front pocket. Like ever since it, that's happened, I got like I went and got my expired ID out and shit, and I went and got a couple new cards and shit, and I was just like, man, I'm putting my fucking wallet in my front pocket. Phone, wallet, keys. Yeah. It's like, what am I? What are you doing with back pockets anyway? Besides ruining your fucking posture. What? I mean, doesn't back wallets ruin your posture? You never saw a Seinfeld, where Costanza had like the big ass wallet, <laughs> and he would like put like every receipt in there and shit. It'll ruin your posture, fam. So you don't see anything wrong with any part of that story other than the fact that you lost your wallet. Absolutely not. Okay. All right. You know, honestly, it, this is weird, but in some w- weird moral dilemma type thing for myself, I find no issue with you stealing the pants from Goodwill. <laughs> Why? I'm, because, like, if you think about it, the Goodwill clothes are just donated by people. Yeah, and exactly. sold for 100% profit. That's really true. And they're also, like, cheap as hell, so it's not like they're... No, really these are some really money. nice pants. They were, like, some G-stars and shit. Like. Yeah, but how much do they charge for them? Oh, like, 10 bucks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like they're like not nothing. Yeah, it was like yeah. nothing. It was like nothing. There, yeah, it was like a hundred percent profit. Um, yeah, that's it, man. You ain't got any cute stories from the weekend? No, that shit was fucking. Isn't that a? Isn't that a shit? It was like, I was so pissed. It sounds like instant karma. That's all it sounds like. Yeah, but and I don't even believe in karma. Exactly. I don't like, think that's exactly that's, what it sounds like. I told myself. Someone else told me that, and guess what? I told them. I said, "It's cool. You can just buy me everything." What? Like, what? you know, hey, Jamal, don't, don't go steal it. All right, just buy it for me. You can just buy it for me. It's cool. I'll let you. I'll let you buy it for me. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not mad. No, no, no pressure. I mean, no hassle. No hassle. If you, if you don't want me to take it, you know what? Uh, you, you, you take it right up there to the register. I believe in you. Because <laughs> that's I really think, what it sounds like. I think if this story was told without, like, you don't need to tell the point about, I mean, you do and you don't at the same time. Like, you have to tell the part about you getting the hundred dollars, or else like losing the wallet. It's just like, oh, okay, you probably didn't have anything in there if you're yeah. stealing shit. Yeah, yeah. But then at the same time, you telling me about the fact that you just made a hundred dollars that morning, and then you're just going like stealing shit that you don't need. Like, it was less than it was like it was like seventy bucks, but it was like it was you know I say a hundred because it feel, it sounds rounder and better, but it wasn't re- you know. But yeah, I definitely felt the loss. I was, yeah. That night was. Did you much have sadder. soap or did you like need the soap? Because it sounds like you just wanted fancy soap to have soap, fancy soap. You always need more soap. I I go to girls' house like I have two girl roommates. They both have like twelve soaps. They have twelve soaps a piece. You know, like can I get two soaps? Can I be a guy with two soaps if they get to have twelve soaps? <laughs> you need something for your they face. Steal, they your steal those body. soaps. I don't know. I they don't know probably, what the fuck they, they probably do. didn't steal. Those soaps. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they do. I'm not here to snitch on them. <laughs> so you you never shoplift? I don't think I. I have. would never like I would never take something from a person, but I would totally shoplift just uh, 
just based on what we just like just based on have worked in retail a lot you know i've worked in retail a lot and i've also and uh, like the thing you said about goodwill and shit like most of these companies just like super winning so i'm just like yeah i'll just have this small amount i deserve this portion it's just this portion i'm not i'm not like crippling the business you know what i'm saying i'm not like like take stealing goodwill trucks you know what i'm saying like like ship sending the truck to my house like yeah yeah pull out up here we're gonna sell this shit out of the you know i'm like but I'd probably have that much clothes, like, you know, like, but, but you get what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not like, uh, I'm never out here to hurt these, these, these corporate a-holes, these, uh, CWMs <laughs> or WCM, SCWMs. SCWMs. I'm not here to like rob them. <laughs> Could you not tell them please? I won't, but I do take offense to the fact that you're stealing from my kind. <laughs> It's funny. It's like, uh, it's funny because I don't care. All right. Well, this has been a great show. Let's go ahead and uh, wrap it up, Jamal. Now that you made me feel like shit, <laughs> I think you made me feel like shit. Good. You should. <laughs> but it's been a great week. I'm really glad you came. Um, yeah, it was a good time. Absolutely. Uh, what's your favorite song of the week? You got a slapper you want to throw out there? Dude, Chun the Chun Li. Chun Li is a yeah. slapper. Um, I like. Little Uzi, Rich Forever. Check that out. It's a little secret song. He kind of like snuck out there. And also like the, I like Everybody's Who Run It remix. DJ Paul did the best Who Run It remix, obviously. Um, I mean, besides G Herbo, I said remix. But yeah, man, uh, peace and love, all you motherfucking thugs. Thanks for tuning in to the this week's Ken Force podcast. Shout outs to Daniel Tonius and Brian, who couldn't be here. But uh, from the bottom of my dark black heart and Ben Grimm Wilson's anthem standing white heart, we do love you. Peace and love, guys.